In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, why does swapping two phases make a three-phase motor run backwards? Now, this question has come off the back of a video that Gary and Gordon made on an absolutely genius bit of kit made by Skarmy. It's a three-phase plug that has an extraordinary feature built in. In the end of the plug here, there's a slot that you slip a screwdriver into and then give a twist through 180 degrees. Doing this swaps the positions of two of the pins over. The benefit of this is that if it's connected to a three-phase motor, it will reverse the direction of the motor. Gone is the faff of opening up the lid of a three-phase motor and trying to swap over the connections on those fiddly little studs. Ping! There goes one of the star washers down into the bowels of the connection box, never to be seen again. But it's all well and good knowing that it happens. But why does the motor change direction? Well, the secret lies in the way that a three-phase motor works. We're going to consider a simple squirrel cage induction motor, although the principles are similar for all three-phase motors. In very crude terms, a motor has three coils of wire wound up inside it, and these are offset from each other by 120 degrees. Now, at this point, the clever bods will chime in to tell me that actually, there's more than three coils, and the offsetting between adjacent coils will be less than 120 degrees. Well done, you're all beautiful geniuses, and we appreciate you turning up. However, looking at it in these basic terms will help to make the principle clear. So, here you can see a model of what the three coils look like, and these ends would normally be wired up the sides to an access box for terminal. However, again, for the purposes of this video, we're going to leave them loose here. Now, although these are connected to an AC supply, it's helpful to know which end of the winding is which to start with. Depending on where you are in the world, the markings on these conductors may be a little different, but we're going to go with U, V and W, and we'll differentiate the two ends of each winding with numbers. So this one here is U1, and the other end will be U2. This end will be V1. Notice that this end is offset by 120 degrees from U1, and the other end, V2, is offset by 120 degrees from U2. And the same principle applies to the final winding with W1 here and W2 here. Now, if we look at a three-phase waveform, you can see that there's three sine waves, and again, they're offset from each other by 120 degrees. So that means the voltage, and therefore the current they drive, is peaking and dropping at different moments in time. At this point, there's one really important thing to remember about an AC waveform, and that is that as the current drops into this negative part of the graph, it indicates that the current has changed direction and is going the other way around the circuit. That's going to be critically important in just a moment. So we're going to say that when the current is in the positive part of the cycle, it's going into the terminal marked with a 1 and coming out of the terminal marked with a 2. And when the current goes into the negative part of the cycle, it's changed direction and goes the other way. We'll take another look at our sine wave, but we'll freeze it at a moment in time. So here you can see the current flowing through line 1 is at maximum in the positive part of the graph, and so is going into U1 and around the coil this way. The current in line 2 is halfway from its peak in the negative part of the cycle, and so is going the opposite way, into V2 and around this way. And line 3 is behaving exactly the same way. So now we know the direction of the current in each coil, if we take a cross section of the motor, we can represent the current flowing in each group of conductors. Here, the current is going away from us, and so we represent that with a cross, and here it's flowing towards us, which we represent with a dot. In the winding marked V, we can see that the current flows towards us here and away from us here, and so we place the dot and cross accordingly. And in W, we have a similar situation. Now, when current flows through a conductor, it generates a magnetic field around it. If current is flowing away from you, the magnetic field has a clockwise direction, and if it's flowing towards you, the field has an anti-clockwise direction. So we can show all the fields around the conductors, and it will look a bit like this. However, these magnetic fields will obey the laws of physics and meld into each other on each side while repelling each other down the middle. So we end up with a magnetic field that looks like this. Now, however, we know that the current never stands still in an AC circuit, but is ever changing. And so if we consider another point on the waveform, we can see that things have changed. L1 is now still positive, but of a smaller magnitude. L3 is at its maximum negative value, but the real change is that the L2 has now become positive. In other words, it's changed its direction. So how does this affect the current into the motor? Well, if we swap the direction of current in our V-winding, it will also change the polarity of the magnetic field around that conductor, making the whole magnetic field look like this. 
So you can see that the whole magnetic field has shifted around by 60 degrees, and we can keep on repeating this process. If we look at a third moment in time in our three-phase waveform, we can see that the L2 current is now peaking at a maximum positive value, and the L1 current has gone negative and therefore changed direction. So now our cross-section has the opposite current flow in L1, and it makes the whole magnetic field look like this. Again, it's shifted by 60 degrees, and actually if we keep on doing this process, we end up with a magnetic field that looks something like this. We've developed a rotating magnetic field inside the motor. Now at this point, we circle back around to our very clever friends who pointed out that there would be lots of coils in here at smaller offset angles from 120 degrees. This makes the magnetic field rotate more smoothly and will also affect the motor speed. More on this in another video. But hopefully you get the broad principle of the rotating magnetic field inside the motor. Now inside the motor sits what's referred to as a squirrel cage. And again, we're not going to dive too deeply into how this works now. The basic principle is that the rotating magnetic field cuts across the conductive copper bars in the squirrel cage and generates a current in them. This current circulates inside the bars of the squirrel cage and that generated or induced current, hence induction motor, makes its own magnetic field which interacts with the rotating magnetic field and by various attractions and repulsions as dictated by the laws of magnetism makes the squirrel cage turn at a slightly slower speed than the rotating magnetic field generated by the three phase windings. Very clever stuff. So to answer the question as to the change of direction of the motor when two of the phases are reversed, the answer becomes clear. If we swap over L1 and L2 and map the direction of current through the windings at various points of the waveform, you can see that as we progress through the shape of the waveform, the rotating magnetic field is now going the other way and therefore the motor will turn in the opposite direction. Now I don't know about you, but I think that is really very clever. To see this incredibly ingenious socket doing its motor reversal thing in real life, then check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching.